What's up guys, today we're talking about the Alakine's gun tactic. It's actually not really a tactic, more of a setup of your pieces, but there are a lot of tactics that arise when you have your pieces in this position. We're gonna start with some very basic examples like this one right here. We're gonna work our way through to some more complicated ones like this one over here. And regardless of what your rating is, I think you're gonna learn a lot today. So first things first, when we say Alakine's gun, we're talking about a battery that you create with your pieces. Now, if you don't know batteries, when you line up your pieces either on a rank, a file, or a diagonal. In this case, we've lined up our pieces on the D file, creating this battery. Alakine's gun, to my understanding, usually means that both of the rooks are in the front of the queen. Now you could switch these, maybe the queen's in the middle, and occasionally the queen might be in the front, but generally speaking, it's gonna be most effective this way, and that's because you can, if you needed to trade or sometimes sacrifice these rooks, you'll be able to end up with the queen as the final piece, which is the most powerful. And so that's why usually the queen going to the back is a good idea. So um, once we have this, you can see how it creates a lot of pressure on your opponent's position. In this case, black is really trying to defend that pawn. We might play a move like knight to f5, and we're probably going to be able to win that pawn. Okay, so let's start with our first example here. It's black to play. What is black's best move in this position? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is simply rook to d6, and this looks very similar to what I just showed you. You create the Alakine's gun battery, and you're attacking the knight. And look at this, we have actually four pieces attacking the knight, and it's only defended three times. And so if white wants to save the knight, they have to move it somewhere. However, if they do, then again, we have three pieces lined up on this rook and only two defending it. So you can see we can just simply take and we come out on top because we had the extra piece. All right, so that's just a good example of how it's very powerful when you line up those pieces onto a good target. That's the key. You want to make sure that you're lining them up onto a good file or in this case, a, a piece that you're attacking. Okay, You can't just put them anywhere and expect it to be effective. For example, if this pawn was on B3 and we lined up our pieces over here attacking that pawn, then it's probably not going to be that you know effective. All right, let's go to the next example. Black to play and win. What should black play? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, so the first thing you want to ask yourself is what is the, the battery or the Alakine's gun attacking? Well, it's attacking the H2 square, but if we count up one, two, three attackers, white has one, two, three defenders. And so simply just taking isn't going to cut it in this position. However, we have this nice little knight move, knight to G3 check, which is a fork. And even though the rook can take us, we lure that rook away. And once the rook is gone, now if we recount, White only has two pieces defending, we have three attacking, and so we can simply take, take again, and that's checkmate, okay? So a good example of how you had to pair that Alakine's gun uh, battery along with something else in the position, in this case it was knight to g3 check, which ultimately led to the checkmate. All right, let's look at the next one. It's black to play and win, what is black's best move? All right, if you had a chance to look at that. So again, we have the battery. This time it's switched around a little bit. The queen's in the middle, right? Um, but again, if we count one, two, three, and one, two, three, it looks like white's defended. So we have to do something different. And in this case, the move is knight takes d3. Again, it's a nice little fork. And notice how if white captures us, then the rook is left undefended down there. We simply take it, and now we, we basically won the rook for the knight, okay? So another example of how we had to pair something else going on in the position along with the threat from the Alakine's gun. All right, let's go to the next one, and they are gonna start to get more difficult. It's white to play and win. What is white's best move in this position? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, when I first looked at this position, I was tempted to say the move queen to h7, but then the king goes to f8 and the king is escaping and we don't really have a follow-up. And so the move in this position is queen to h8. It's a queen sacrifice. Of course, the, the black uh, king can't escape, so he has to take it. And then we simply take with check. We bring this rook down and it's a really beautiful checkmate with the two rooks because the king is just trapped and our pawn is actually playing a vital role in this one. So that's a good one to be aware of. If you've never seen that before, you probably had a hard time thinking of that move. But now that you've seen it, um, you know, you'll, you'll spot this one in the future, I, I think. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, it's white to play. What is white's best move in this position? All right, if you had a chance to look at that. So the first thing, uh, we have this lined up here but it's you know defended two times so that doesn't really help us we also have a threat here on g7 with our queen and our rook but it's also defended 
we don't want to take this and lose our queen. That's defended. It looks like everything is defended. However, if we think about the Alakine's gun and the fact that we might want to triple up our pieces, you might notice the move queen to d5 check. And as soon as you think about that, black has to waste a move moving the king somewhere. And notice what we've done. One, two, now we have three pieces lined up on the rook. It's only defended twice. And we simply can go for this trade and we're going to come out on top. And now we're winning. Okay. So again, another example of there was this idea of the Alakine's gun, but you had to pair it with the fact that there was a check. And that's ultimately what led to, to the winning position. All right, let's go to the next one. It's black to play. What is black's best move? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook to d1 check, and white's king has a problem. You can either move here, or you can try to block with the rook. Those are the only two options you have. If you try to run here, we can simply bring the queen in, and this is checkmate. And so most likely white would try to block with the rook, but then we can simply take, and then the queen comes down, and it's also checkmate. Here's a good example of how I said, you know, Having the queen either in the middle or in the back can be beneficial because once that first rook goes down, and in this case gets traded off, we can follow up with the queen and it's checkmate. Okay, so it's kind of important sometimes the order that the, the pieces are in. If the rooks are in the front or if the queen's in the front or, you know, kind of depends on the position. But when you're setting up the Alakine's gun yourself, you want to be thinking through those things. What, what's most likely to happen? Am I most likely going to trade one or two rooks? Would it be beneficial for my queen to be in the middle or at the end? Uh, and sometimes, you, you know, you can't control that, like just depending on what happens in the game, it just ends up a certain way. But just keep those things in mind. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, it's white to play. What should white play? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, you might have been tempted to say queen here check, thinking that you're going to win the rook. Let's just say the king moves here and you take the rook. The problem with that is your own king is not safe, and black's going to come over here, and now you just lose. Okay, you get checkmated. So what you needed to see, and this is actually very similar to a previous one that I showed you guys, but after we take here with check, takes, takes, and look at this, same kind of pattern that we saw before, check and checkmate. There's not enough spaces for the king to hide, and we can deliver the checkmate with the rooks and the pawn. Okay, so that one was a little bit trickier. It was kind of disguised, but hopefully you're getting, you're starting to pick up on that pattern uh, where even, you know, you can even sacrifice your queen. All right, let's go to the next one. I have three more for you. They are going to start to get more difficult. White to play. What should white play in this position? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, so this one is interesting because it really looks like queen to h6 would be a really strong move trying to go for checkmate here. The problem is that black has the option then to just give up the queen for the two rooks. Yes, you can take here with check, but then the king moves and you're probably going to have to just keep giving him checks. Eventually, black can take this if you stop giving him checks and it's going to be hard to win. Okay, so because of that, we needed to find something better and the better move is queen to f4. And what we're doing here is creating a major threat on f8. One, two, three. Now we have four pieces threatening to go here. And the only way that black could really stop that would be a move like queen to c8 lining up there. So that if we can go here, they can take and take and take. And that works out fine for black. However, now we can go queen to h6. The queen is no longer threatening to take our rook. And now black can't stop the checkmate. And so because of that, uh black would i don't know what they would do maybe take this with the rook but then we can use this to take advantage of the f8 square with rook to f8 if they take it's checkmate so they would probably move here and we simply take their rook okay and so we're, we're winning a rook and it all started with a very simple kind of quiet move of just sliding the queen back creating that triple battery which ultimately caused so many problems for black and so you can see how how powerful this is uh, when you pair it with some other stuff going on in the position, in this case, it was this past e-pawn uh, that ultimately was too much for black to handle. All right, let's go to the next one. It's black to play. What move should black play? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, uh, again, we have the same kind of idea, a very quiet move. You can see there's some, some stuff happening here, but all we need to do is slide our queen back. If white takes, we simply recapture. We're not worried about that. But what we've done now is create the triple threat here. And we're threatening to just take this. And if white takes, it's going to be checkmate. And white doesn't actually have a good way to defend this. A king to h1 is, is a try, but now we can simply take. Of course, they can't take us or it's checkmate. If they take here, like I mentioned, we take here. And white's just in big trouble. 
uh they i think they have to go up the queen otherwise we're just going to take here and checkmate them um or i should point out if they move the rook away we have a nice finish here if you want to pause that's right we have the move rook to h2 forcing the take and then queen g2 is checkmate okay and again you see how powerful it is when you have these these you know rooks and queens are powerful pieces and so when you put all of them in the same file it really creates some serious threats that your opponent has to watch out for, okay? All right, I have one more for you guys. This is the most difficult one that we've looked at. Uh, black to play, what move should black play? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, so we have the triple battery, but white also has, you know, the two rooks kind of lined up as well. There's a queen, which might potentially come down here. There's a knight. There's, there's kind of a lot happening. However, we have a nice move here, and it's the move knight to c5 and what we're doing is we're pairing this battery so creating a threat on the rook along with another major threat which is attacking the queen right like white doesn't want to just lose their queen and there's a couple things that they could try number one if they do go for this queen trade like i mentioned we simply take it and since we've got the battery we're able to take white's rook so that doesn't work for white now the interesting line that you really needed to calculate is what happens if they just take our rook because then they create an attack on our queen too and you needed to see that we could take here with the fork. They have to take our queen because we just took their queen. And here's the key. We take the rook with check. Right? If we didn't have that check, this wouldn't work because white would be able to take us. But because it's with check, uh, white has the tough decision. Do they move the king and allow us to take the rook? We're up a rook. Or do they take our knight and then we take the rook? We're still up the exchange. We have a rook for the knight, which is good for us, right? So... Uh, that was a pretty, you know, pretty difficult one, a little bit more complicated, but it's the same idea of pairing that, you know, powerful battery along with something else that's going on in the position. And ultimately the tactics work out in our favor. Okay. So these are the kind of things you want to think about in your games when you have three pieces lined up and, and Hey, if you're not lining up your pieces like this, maybe you need to start doing that. Like pick an open file, right? and start lining up your pieces, triple batteries, you can probably create a lot of tactics in, in your games if you start doing this, okay? So I hope you guys learned something from this, and um, let me know your thoughts down below on the Alakine's battery, but I will see you guys next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.